Aina 4.0 is basically out and here is the list of the best features of the Aina 4 Red Kite. By the way, the list was chosen by me completely, at, not at random, but this is my extremely subjective list, so different people might have different options, but the best feature of INA 4 are. Let's begin with the rate dynamics. Rate dynamics is the, like the name suggests, it, those, this is the ex additional dynamics added to your rate system. It acts almost it's not really a PID controller, but has some elements of the PID controller and modifies how your input is transferred into the set point for the PID controller. And with the help of the right dynamics, you can modify your, let's say, flying style or rather the response of the quad. Ray Dynamics is not something new, it's with us for I think like two years now, almost two years. It was developed for the Emu Flight, and the people connected with Emu Flight likes the right Dynamics very much. And if you are aware of how Ray Dynamics are working for Emu Flight, it works exactly the same for INAF. However, some of the names of the settings are slightly different. The next thing that comes with INAF 4 is the finally the support of the SD card of the on the STM32H7 flight controllers. Mm, not fully because right now INAF supports only the SD card working in the SDIO mode, but luckily this basically solves the problem of the SD card support on the probably the most popular H7 right now, which is the Matic H743. Bear in mind. It's not yet working for the different modes of the SD card, like for example on the Holybro KQT H7, which uses the SD card mode of the SD card, however that sound. Hopefully this thing will be supported in the INAF 4.1, which hopefully will be released in January. The next interesting feature of INAF 4 is something called the D-Boost the D-Boost is in INA for at least a year and it's the D-Term scheduler. Previously, it was working in a way that every time you move the stick rapidly from the center position to not the center position, it was boosting the D gains to give you a smoother response of the quad. And by the way, this is working only on the in the multi-rotor drone mode. However, however, after some time ago, we had the leak of the Flight One Falco X code. Turned out that they are doing things in a slightly way. So with the INA 4.0, there comes the D Boost 2. This is not the Flight One sim mode. This is very important. This is not even close to being a sim mode. This is only the utilization of the idea of the sim mode. And the idea in the sim mode is every time you are making a rapid movements with your stick, we are not raising the response of the D-term, but we are dumping this. Thanks to this, during the rapid uh, stick movements, feed forward control derivative is able to do this thing, but on this, at the same time, the D-term is not opposing the change enforced by the feed forward. So when the Quad is moving fast, we are increasing the gyro, uh, the, the D-term uh, authority for the PID controller, but on the very beginning and the very end of each maneuver, the D-term is dumped so that the response is just, well, it just responds quicker and faster to your movement. By the way, the defaults are, let's say, conservative, because now the D-term with the D-Boost 2 is able to play between half to one point five of the normal values but you can raise those values to give the your quad a uh, wider response envelope mm, if you are into the snappy responses and the very fast changes of the rotation rates then you might go with the lower boundary of the deepest even as low as 0 0.1 0 0.2 and check how this thing is behaving the next new feature is the soaring mode. And the soaring mode is the soaring mode for the gliders, especially not powered gliders. Because can a glider that is powered, is a glider doing the powered phase? 
that's an interesting question. Anyhow, um, up to until uh, INA4, the gliders without motors running were kind of on the verge of really working well with INAV. Why? Because INAV, when the navigation mode position hold and the altitude hold was enabled, was trying also to keep the desired altitude. And because, because it was doing this, the glider without motor cannot really keep the altitude if it's not inside of the thermal. And what was happening? It was usually just increasing the angle of the attack and as the result it was going down even faster, even to the danger of the, of the stall. With the soaring mode enabled, there is a change of the behavior, because right now when you have a glider with the soaring mode enabled, Enabled and you enable the position hold or the cruise mode, INAV will not try to control the altitude. The glider will be allowed, basically allowed to slowly lose the altitude, just like the physics enforces this thing to lose the altitude. And as the result, there is no danger of going into the stall as the angle of attack is constantly increasing. So glider users should be kind of happy with what soaring mode offers. The next interesting improvement is the improvement in the dynamic gyro notches. Uh, INAV is catching up on this development beta flight. It's not yet multi-notches for one axis, but the matrix filter present in the INAV since the 2020 is, has right now much higher resolution. That means it can pinpoint to the correct frequency detected on the gyro signal much more precisely. And on top of that, the setup of this thing was greatly simplified. You do not longer have to worry about the range or anything like that. All you have to really set for the matrix filter is the Q factor, which is the, let's say, the trust level for the gyro and the width of the of the notch that is applied. The, the higher the Q, uh, then the notch is more narrow and attacks only a very specific frequency or a band of the frequencies and the mean frequency that uh, as low as this notch is allowed to go. Every other settings for the dynamic notches are gone. It's simpler faster and like I mentioned it has more than twice the resolution that means the correct frequency with which it should attenuate can be found with twice as much of the precision. And finally, there are two changes to the INAF NAF engine and they are connected with the missions. Uh, because when we are talking about the INAF, one of the killer features of INAF is the ability to run the missions uh, without having to have a PhD in the Ardu pilot. Uh, the first of the features is something called the multi-mission. Right now you have a possibility to store in the EPROM memory more than one mission, uh, like for example three missions, and only select the correct mission before arming to execute this mission on the on the fly. So if you are doing INAF missions, either with the multi-rotor or with the aeroplane, and you have to upload new missions all the time because you are doing something else and something else, something else, right now you don't have to. There is a way to just upload multiple missions. Of course, the total number of waypoints in every, uh, every all the missions combined still has to be below the threshold. And I think the number is 120 waypoints right now, but you can choose which mission will be executed before you are. And this is kind of like useful for those uh, cases, I suppose. And the second interesting feature is the on the fly mission planner. You can record waypoints when you are flying just by switching this, uh, the switch assigned to the record uh, waypoint flight mode in the INAF configurator. And uh, after you land, your mission will be stored in the mission format. So you can export the mission, you can modify the mission. So this is useful when, for example, you are doing some kind of the repeated flying over the over the field because this is for example your job or something like that and for the first mission you always had to like sit with the map and like de design everything now you can just fly the mission manually for the first time when you are making a turn just flip a switch to record new endpoints land save and then reuse the mission as often as you would like this thing to be used and those were those are those were 
my favorite features of the iNav 4.0. Not all, definitely not all, because the full list of the changes is much, 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 much longer, but those are my personal picks and I hope you like them too. And by the way, I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and happy flying.